Welcome to Ring Theory. In this video, I'll be looking at my top seven unsolved mysteries from The Lord of the Rings. If you can think of any I've missed, or have some evidence to solve some of these mysteries, make sure you comment below. Number one, what happened to Frodo's parents? By the time you get into the complex story of The Lord of the Rings, reading through the events of The Two Towers and The Return of the King, it's easy to forget that in the very first chapter of the first book, there is a short exchange where doubt is cast over the boating accident that caused Frodo's parents' death. I've heard they went on the water after dinner in the moonlight, said Old Noakes, and it was Drogo's weight that sunk the boat. And I heard she pushed him in, and he pulled her in after him, said Sandy Man. Hobbiton Miller. The gaffer then shoots these down, ruling them out as conspiracy theories. Of course, it being an accident is the most likely explanation, however, the possibility of foul play remains and cannot be fully ruled out. Number 2. Where is Shelob? Shelob was the great spider of the Lord of the Rings, the last spawn of Ungoliant, who was an ally of Melkor in the First Age. Some forget that Samwise the Brave did not in fact kill Shelob. She fled after the fight, no doubt being hurt and blinded, but retreated back into the caves. Tolkien writes, Shelob was gone, and whether she lay long in her lair, nursing her malice and her misery, and in slow years of darkness healed herself from within, rebuilding her clustered eyes until with hunger like death, she spun once more her dreadful snares in the glens of the Mountains of Shadow. This tale does not tell. We also know Tolkien started a sequel to The Lord of the Rings set in the Fourth Age of Middle-earth. I like to think maybe he had plans for her to stir up evil all over again. Number 3. Who is Tom Bombadil? This is debatedly the most discussed mystery in all of fiction. There are many great theories out there, like he is a Valar in Middle-earth, he is the living embodiment of the music of the Iron Ore. He is Arua Luvatar himself. It's a fascinating internet rabbit hole to go down, but in my view, none of the theories quite add up. Tolkien definitely didn't want us to know who exactly he was, and it will forever remain a mystery. Number four. What was the fate of Radagast? Radagast has a small but substantial role in the Fellowship of the Ring book. He was Saruman's spy, unbeknownst to him, using his birds to look for the ring and lures Gandalf to Orthanc. Realising Saruman's treachery, he does redeem himself by sending Gwaihir, the Great Eagle, to save Gandalf upon the top of Orthanc. After this, his story seems to end. It's explained that the elves searched for him after the Council of Elrond, but he isn't found at his home at Roscobel. Did he succumb to Saruman, or simply go further into the wild to live more closely with the birds and beasts of Middle-earth? Tolkien once wrote that Gandalf differed from Radagast and Saruman in that he never turned aside from his appointed mission. This hints that whatever Radagast's fate, he lost sight of the Astari's mission to aid the three peoples of Middle-earth in their fight against Sauron. Number 5. The Identity of the Nazgul the Nazgul, or Ringwraiths, are a cause of great terror to the free peoples of Middle-earth since their emergence in the Second Age. We know, of course, that Sauron the Deceiver gave to nine men rings of power. One by one, they were ensnared by them, falling into the Wraith world and into the Dark Lord's control. However, very little other information is given about them. We know that one of the rings was given to an Easterling king, and three of them were given to powerful Numenorean men. But other than that, we don't have much to go on. Hopefully, we will see the Numenorean element of this explored in the TV show, if, of course, you'll still be watching it, which I don't blame you at all if you're not. But the only Ringwraith who is ever named is Camel the Easterling. He is the rider who has an exchange with Farmer Maggot in the Fellowship of the Ring. And we are, of course, most familiar with the Witch King of Angmar but this is a name given to him after his exploits in Middle-earth, not a clue at all to his previous identity. Who was Legolas's mother? This mystery is a rarity in Tolkien's work in that we have absolutely no information at all to go on. 
We receive no info on her identity, appearance or activities before or during the events of The Lord of the Rings. We also don't even know exactly when Legolas is born, so it's impossible to cross-reference Thranduil's activities and start working on possible theories. Thranduil was a Sindarin elf, so we can perhaps assume that she was too, but even this would be a guess. She could still be alive, lurking in the background, for some unknown reason, uninvolved and apparently uninterested in the events of The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. She could have died, which might account for Thranduil's bitterness, or she may simply have gone west and returned to Valinor. Legolas's mother is a real, unexplained mystery. Number 7. The Thinking Fox for those that aren't aware, this is relating to the great Thinking Fox debate. As Frodo and Sam begin their journey out of Hobbiton, they spend their first night tucked into a tree. While they sleep, a fox comes along and watches the sleeping hobbits for a brief time. From the fox's internal monologue, the novel reads, Hobbits, well, what's next? I have heard of strange doings in this land, but I have seldom heard of a hobbit sleeping out of doors under a tree. Three of them. There's something might queer behind this. Tolkien explains that the fox never found out any more about it and went on his way. But while it makes for a wholesome moment, it definitely stands out. Never again does the story cut to the inner thoughts of a creature, and few other animals have human-like qualities. It opens up the possibility that all creatures in Tolkien's world are sentient beings. Or, perhaps, people like myself are just looking far too much into it. So, that's the list. If you liked the video, remember to like and subscribe, and make sure to drop me a comment with your favourite Middle Earth mysteries. Thanks for watching Ring Theory. On this channel, I'll be focusing on anything and everything to do with The Lord of the Rings, Tolkien lore from the books, the original trilogy, and the new TV show. If you liked the video and want to hear more, please drop me a like and hit the subscribe button.